Simpson. Jay from Simple Woods Life. I always want to get close to the camera. Here we go, Big Papa. Came out today to start working on it. It is 33 degrees. 39 on the Humidex, and it's 30 degrees in the shade in the woodlot. This, this, this uh, Mother Nature gals, she's, she's lost her mind. We have had a series of heat warnings come through to us from Environment Canada. And that's on top of the air quality warnings that we've <laughs> become accustomed to. Uh, and last week's rainfall warning and thunderstorm warnings. So, uh, if you still don't believe the choices you're making, uh, are gonna affect the planet. Um, I can't help you. This is all the lumber that I've got for the boat, so we'll take it out and we'll see where we net out. Sweet mamacita though, it's hot. What's the temperature in here? You know, if the weather stays like this, I might start doing builds at night. That might be the smart thing to do. Day, Canada. <laughs> Plus, I love all of our okay, Canadian accoutrement. I'm gonna start pulling. I know I stored a bunch of materials um, in my battery box. Got a die-hard deep cycle battery, and I got my battery box. I had all this stored in here. So the funny thing is, like, I have to figure all this out again. Like, I knew where a lot of this was going, and just a, a, an assortment of screws and bolts and L brackets, um, all of which Jay from a couple of years ago was 100% uh, sold on where everything went. So gonna have to kinda, gonna have to kinda rejig my memory. But we're not buying any more hardware, holy crap. I got a couple of sportsman trunks. These things are friggin' awesome. You get these at Canadian Tire when they're on sale, and they're amazing. Uh, this is actually for the John boat. Miss Lady's got a small one that holds all of her sup gear. And while they don't come waterproof, there's a seam here that I'm just gonna install, a little rubber gasket, and make it waterproof. All right, we got our tubing for our wires. It's the wiring kit for the boat trailer. Oh, a couple of sticky on reflectors. We got our 360 lights. I don't know, is that big enough? So if that's here on a deck, and what I liked about this is it folds down, right? So out of way, stand it up. Boop, boop, boop. That's a 360. Hopefully it suffices. I had to buy a heat gun to do my wiring. This is my wiring box. And then I got a couple of these little, little emergency paddles. Huh? Pretty cool. Obviously, nowhere near as good as a proper ore, um, which I might bring as a backup, uh, depending. You're in the middle of the lake, and you need to... Hold on, everybody. I know the chop's coming in, but... I've got one for Miss Lady, too. We'll determine based on the body of water if I'm bringing the oars. Because I got oars. But these, they tuck nicely into, you know, storage. So, I bought myself a really heavy duty wire stripper because the wire stripper I have is quite rough. This I had them make me at Napa. You take a Napa, you don't go to Napa. It runs to the front of the boat. This goes from the Battery to the shutoff or the fuse box. Again, I'll have to refer to my notes. And then we've got our master shutoff with key, waterproof, pretty snazzy. Got my wire, I've got my fuse panel, 
This is my LED spotlight. So that'll sit up on the front. My shrinkable, heat shrinkable stuff, my tubes. I have some butt connectors. <laughs> Ring terminals and quick uh, disconnect terminals. So that's, that's, that's our, that's our wiring. Oh, and then we've got um, our, one is red, one is green. And I was trying them out on the battery. It's pretty cool. Another big ass trunk. Again, Canadian tire. These were so friggin' cheap, like, I wanna say like 30 bucks or something, 29 bucks. This is the big one for the big boat. And again, you got that groove. Put a little rubber gasket in there. These are Manolo boat decals for my numbers. Should I switch those out? Thank you, PV Mart. No, TSC. That's how long I've been working on this. That store doesn't exist. It was bought out, now it's 100% Canadian PV Mart. Whoops, our boat cover support pole, which is over there. It's got a boat cover until such a time that I get um, a proper thing built. This I picked up uh, Canadian Tire, it's a waterproof spotlight, just part of my emergency kit, and like this was like $4.99. They had it on an 80% off day, so like who's not gonna not, I got a couple of these for hunting and they're awesome. Who's not gonna get that? I got my bilge pump. <laughs> Miss Lady's dad was telling me when I was telling him, I picked up a bilge pump. He goes, bilge pump? All you gotta do is you get her clipping, get it up on plane. If you got water in there, you pull the plug. It'll go right out. That's what he told me. So I was like, yeah, cool. That's awesome, Dave, 100%. I bought a build pump. Not trying to disrespect him, but also not trying to drown. And that's my plumbing kit for it, because you know, you can't get them together. My mini bus and my kill switch key for my motor and for my wiring. Part of the emergency kit, little signal horn. I have one, I bought an extra, because the amount of times I've been with other people when they've got to the boat launch and realized their boat plug was sitting in, you know, their other truck or sitting back at home or whatever, so I figured best have a second. A brand new essentials kit, a little bit of dock line. We've got our launch line, got some pretty decent rope. You can never really have enough rope. I got a couple of Berkeley boat rod holders. Now we're getting into the reason we're getting this all sorted out. Gotta have my Rapala ruler, which will stick down the side of the boat. Tie down hitch for the boat to keep it to the trailer. This is my switch panel for the boat itself. Pretty standard. These are just stupid, but a couple of adjustable drink holders that I'm gonna put on the fronts of all the seats. Cause I don't want the kids having their cans of pops out and you know, we hit a wave and it goes sliding, so. That was one of those Bass Pro, hey, if you fill your shopping cart up, uh, we'll ship it to you for free. So these are the bases for my seats. They swivel and the lock, so nice. I have smashed those black trailer things too many times, so a couple of reflectors that I'll slice, put down those. I've got a US Coast Guard approved fire extinguisher. Again, part of safety. Picked up two of these buttes from Bass Pro. A little dusty, but nice seats, right? Some cushy for your tushy. I like that joke. I'm gonna say it a lot. And then finally, a couple of fenders. Uh, <laughs> I told you, man, we got everything. What we don't have is know-how. So, we'll figure it out. So there we go. We, we've, got, we've got more than enough gear and, um, and fun things and add-ons and whatnot. I am literally drenched. I can't have the fan on and be talking to you. And I'm also making ribs because we're still celebrating Canada Day. We're doing some baby back applewood smoked charcoal fired Memphis city style rub ribbity dibs. And then tomorrow we're gonna jump onto this and uh, see what kind of damage we can do.
What's going on? Morning. Before we do anything, I gotta vacuum this boat out because Mickey Mouse made a visit to us in the winter when it was stored inside the Shelter Logic and he hasn't done much. I mean, there's nothing in it for him to have. Um, but yuck. Time has passed. It's not the next day, it's the day after. Sorry cats, but I found my notes um, for whatever they're worth. Uh, clearly Jason from last year, two years ago, wasn't writing notes thinking he'd have to understand it. These are the notes for my, uh, <laughs> my canoe uh, thing that I'm gonna build in the woods. You now there's some stuff for that. I've got notes in here for some of the different bits of wiring and such. I actually found my breakdown of all the wood I'm gonna need. So like, I've been piecemealing it, going through it, finding out what I can find, some of the different storage areas. And as far as the front deck goes, which is what we're gonna tackle first, I've been playing with it a little bit, uh, trying to figure out whatever the hell I was thinking back in the day. So let me walk you through it real quick. We got two cabinets. Big one here. This cabinet's gonna be for the battery box. This is gonna be anchor and rope storage. It is hot, it is hot as I'll get out in the shot. I don't know if that's gonna glare because I got the door open, but like, can't have the fan on and chat with you. A little bit of air coming through here. In one of my original diagrams here, these were gonna be side pockets, which seems pretty cool until you realize then that's four doors on the top and I'm struggling with how to build one. So I'm not gonna make them side pockets. <laughs> one thing I also found was this little sample of wood and it's come in pretty handy because I realized this is, this is floating, right? I've got my main uh, bracket going up the bow. It's coming from a piece on the floor, which is attached to a board on the seat. So it's really rigid, like structurally that way. This way it's floating and I don't want anything going up against the side of the boat. And there's a good gap there. I can get my hand behind it. But what I found about this is I clearly was thinking that I could place it here and it would act as a support, right? So one of the things I did uh, last year, the year before, I keep wanting to say last year, was I made these little uh, puzzle pieces and they act as walls to house in the battery box, give it some sort of a bit of structure. It's not like airtight, watertight, whatever. And that's really neat and it's really cool and it's really awesome. And the one at the front is where the master switch is gonna go, except that kind of kills my idea for doing the um, little extra bit of support. So I'm just trying to noodle that in the old noodler. So then the issue becomes, how do I add a little bit of extra support for this guy? Somehow maybe tie it in there, wouldn't be, wouldn't be a dumb idea. I think that's part of it, but I still think I need to get down here somehow. So the only thing I think um, that makes sense is if I go down the side, on either side of the kill switch, kind of, um, sort of like a V, you know? Could have said diagonal, it's less words. And then maybe I do also add that extra bracket just across, just for a little bit of extra stability. Although I've got a pretty rigid plywood on top, so maybe I won't do that, because I want to keep weight as a consideration as well. The only thing is, if I do that with the little V, I'm gonna have to notch either the top of the side walls out or cut a little hole in them. So that's just, I know it seems like, well, buddy, do it. But like, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, and so far in this build, I've gone through, oh, yesterday and this morning, uh, well over a pot and a half of coffee. Yesterday turned into uh, a couple of beers as well. Just a lot of staring, sketching, saying, hmm. And, um, I went for a drive to clear my head. I was gonna go quadding, but I wanted to take the dog. And uh, I, went for a <laughs> I went for a drive yesterday. It was, uh, it was a lovely drive. I hit all the back roads uh, until I didn't. And then I got onto the highway just to try and be safe. Uh, it was about 30 minutes out from the lodge when, uh, when we had a little bit of fun.
Well, there's a pickle and a half. I had, uh, I had my, my engine temperature just going crazy, going higher and higher. So I pulled over here where the fresh cut is because I thought I need to get it uh, off the road a little bit so I can cool it down. And that fresh cut isn't uh, gravel, it's grass. So I got a little too far off the road. Hey, all right. <laughs> okay. How about that for an adventure? Well, it wouldn't be an adventure if it wasn't an adventure. Uh, it happened so quick, but I had a fella come up and uh, he had some pretty strong chain. His 2500 pulled my 1500 out, so we were fine. And I've tried to eke forward a couple hundred feet here and a couple hundred feet there, but it's turning off in Teletrack, it's turning off traction control, it's saying engines overheated. I looked under the hood and it's spewing something. Hopefully it's just a hose, but I got to get a tow truck coming now to tow it out to town. And um, they'll deal with it in the morning, I guess. So that's that f***ing thing. So there we go. whoop de doo More adventure in the woods. The kind you don't want. And I'm not in the woods. It was on a back road. Now I'm on a highway. I believe I've failed to mention what I'm doing here. This whole area is gonna be a fishing deck. I don't have a trolling motor, uh, like a foot pedal trolling motor now. Uh, I might in a few years. I haven't made any plans for it. I know this little anchor thing would be a perfect spot to maybe have the pedal. Or I can just have it up on the top. Hey, bougie. This whole area, this whole thing will be either a fishing deck or you know, you could lay on it or just, you know, whatever. But uh, that's the thought for the front of the boat. One good thing about having all this stuff sitting here for two years, I didn't throw anything out by mistake. It was all sitting in the boat. Ugh. My God, it's 20,000 degrees in here. But I came across this. This is a test piece for the walls. See, I kind of want it to be... I feel like this is like just brutal trying to explain the, the angles. So bear with me here. Uh, you know, pure Oscar winning cinema, this will not be. This is the issue, is this gap, right? That main beam is bolted into the seat, so we're solid and we're sturdy. Got our floor down here. It's solid, right? So then we've got these two posts and they're holding the second support and then there's a two by four that runs up it. Um, right up, I don't know boat terms. The, the, up the bow, the spine of the bow, the keel, it's not a keel, the spine, the backbone, the bow bone. The issue that I'm having is with, right? So some sort of support to hold this up, like that, right? If we're to do something like that, and look where that wants to land. 
And I think that might be a problem for the boundary box. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. I don't want anything so tight in there that it causes problems out on the high seas. <laughs> oh, high seas, delicious. I'll have a glass of that right now. Okay, let's put the battery box back in there. This is what we call in the biz a mock-up. So what are the chances if I'm able to get something that attaches to that? Hmm. Perfect world it would come off there, right? Because then that leaves us lots of room between the battery box and that. However, that will then only su support that. Maybe that's enough, but kind of don't want to do that. So this isn't it. This is a two by four. But I wonder, could I do like a like kind of a sh shelf system? It's kind of that kind of that kind of thing. I never know if I'm onto something or if I've, if I've lost it. <laughs> Have I lost the plot or am I onto something? Am I a genius or am I, what, what are you doing bud? And the fun thing is anyone who wants to comment uh, under this video, by all means, uh, appreciate it, but I will have already done what I've done. So, <sighs> unless I pause the video right now and hope that people comment, but then like, that's kind of a sucky video. I looked at some stuff I bought a few years ago. My truck broke down, I made some ribs. And this is the front of the boat. That's the video for this week, everybody. Thanks for coming out. This is James from Woodlock. No, I don't think so. Okay, what if, what if I did both? I got something small, maybe half this. Just imagine it there, okay? And then this did its best to come up to an angle there, but also did its best to leave room between the battery box and its leg. I don't know if that's a thing. I feel like it could be a thing. Ah. Uh, I've got some Scraps of cedar fence board. Um, that might be a thing. We might have a thing. Let me think. It's just this one. Okay. I'd have to cut that a bit longer. I don't know, man. Something's telling me I'm overthinking this. Got to think about what the strongest angles are. Five minutes later. So I'm looking around my workshop and I built these shelves with Miss Lady a few years back. All right, because we've got a pretty tall, a pretty tall shop. Um, and these angles here, is there something in that? Like a timber frame. Timber frame, but you like, is there something in that? Is there something in an angle? Because what I'm doing there is all fine and dandy, but also it isn't because there's so much room for measurements to go off. And, and the other thing, too, is I want to make sure I keep this thing as level as possible because I can see it's a little out of whack right now. It wasn't earlier, but maybe just because of all my fussing.
rethink it again. For the thousandth time. That's strong. All right? It's strong. It's attached to the boat. This is strong. It's got two pillared supports to come down. And off of that, we've got this, um, this L brackets to the bottom, this big two by main spine. A couple of L brackets down there. It feeds up on an angle. This feeds back into it here. And that's very strong. So this, this general square area is very strong. That's the weak spot. So could I possibly take some learnings from these big ass shelves? If I was to build something that screwed into that down here on this main, this main pillar under this, right? Pretend that's a good angle. <laughs> And then that came up into that, right? So up here it's sitting nice and mitered and it ties into that. Thus, removing that wiggle room, because that's not too bad, but it's, you know, I don't like it. But if I do that bracket here, there's no way to get a good shot of that. If I do that bracket coming up from there ba -bow, up to there. And I mean, it's not the end of the world if it rests on that structural support, is it? I don't know. But it would make that angle strong, wouldn't it? Then you would have this weight coming down onto that pillar, which is already supported by these. That'd be hella strong, I think. I think. I don't 100% know. I do need to get this boat level though. We're on the money there. So if I'm going to build something here. Okay, so. Now that's 50 degrees. Is that close? Not really, eh? Kind of. What do you think? That'll certainly reduce the flex, eh? I think that might be a solve. I'm also seeing every leaf upside down. The wind is picking up. The quads are outside and the tractor trailer the tractor trailer, doesn't that sound tough? I got a tractor trailer in my driveway! My little green John Deere trailer in the driveway. It, the, it's just oh, of heat, so I think we're gonna get ourselves a crack-a-lack-a-thunderstorm. 
uh, and we're pushing, <laughs> we're pushing mid-afternoon now. So I've taken a bit of time to try and um, figure this out. But I think that's a pretty good fix. Like I think that might, like nothing's ever going to be as rigid as a deck, right? You know, or if I literally bolted it to the, the hull of the boat. And I know there's, you know, you're I, I follow Tiny Boat Nation too. I've seen what they do with rivets and going through here and everything's aluminium, aluminum, sorry, was raised by an Irish woman. But I see how all that goes. Thing is, I'm trying to do as much as I can without putting a hole in the boat. I'm more comfortable working with wood than I am with metal. I've got tools for wood for the most part. If I gotta get a couple of drill bits, I get a couple of drill bits, but I don't have to. It's definitely gonna stop some of the give. I might do a couple of extra support pieces just around the edge, but I think it works. I'll cut the same for the other side. And then the bonus with this setup is I don't lose anything with my walls that I've kind of created there for the battery box. And I don't have anything going into that area to further crowd it up. We have not achieved the level of a progression that I was hoping for. But what we have achieved is a, is a pretty good breakthrough problem solver. Because I have been thinking and thinking and thinking about this. And I actually, as I recall, this is why I stopped last time. Oh shit, there comes the rain. I could technically still work in here. It's a lot tighter space. It's not the end of the world. I could do it, but it's a dead freaking hot 30 degrees. 30 feels like 37. So I'm gonna go either have a dip or take a quick shower, maybe do a bit of editing. Uh, and then I'll pick this up tomorrow and we'll get the other one built and the top of our deck. And that will be a nice video. everybody. Woo! Weather's gotten insane again. Mother nature. You so crazy. It's 20 degrees right now. Sun, cloud, sun, cloud, sun, cloud, sun. And uh, it's 20 degrees, like almost zero humidity. We've had a, a ridiculous amount of rain overnight. And uh, whew, it's lovely to sleep too, but uh, it's cooled everything else. Everything, everything now is very nice and cool. So Finally, uh, we seem to have broken that heat. How long that goes on for? I don't know, none of my business. We're gonna do a little template Tracy Tracy and, uh, and get this thing going. I'm gonna have to toenail this. My angle's not 100% there. Uh, I'm taking a, an L bracket and seeing if I can't bend it a touch so that I can kind of fill up that section and give it a little bit of added support. I mean, it's, it's the hobo way to do things. Hobo workmanship all aboard. I'm not going to expect anybody to be impressed that I can bend steel, but you know. I need to use the smaller drill. Small drill. What you thinking on a lovely windy afternoon?
Okay, I'm gonna give myself that. I'm mad. Uh, that doesn't look too shabby. I mean, it does look a little shit, but we've lost that bounce. I think we solved it. Painful to get here, but we got here. You and me. Huh? We did that together. Yeah. Give yourself a pat on the back, too. If someone was out here with me, uh, they'd be like, dude! What? Wicked! Oh, my man! Thank you! Dude, that looks so good! It's like wicked! It's like so good! It's too much! It's like factory quality. Stop. You are probably the greatest craftsman of all time. Stop it. You probably should never really be allowed to do this much more than the one time only, though. Dude, you're embarrassing me. This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is Art Attack. Hello, hello. I got me some board and a little bit of sticky sticky. Ah, from the dollar store. Dollar store and more, because this, this was $2. Well, it feels like a ripoff. But we're gonna have an art attack. We're gonna make ourselves a wee little stencil. This was Ms. Lady's favorite part. She was looking forward to doing it, but decided to eat lunch instead of uh, jumping into this. So, I mean, it was tacos, so not the wrong choice. Oh, hey everyone. How's it going? Yeah, you know, ain't no thing. It's just, uh, it's just how we do in the woods. I'm Jay from Sample Woods Life and I'm making a boat. <laughs> Woo! I bought it because I like the rabbit. So, we got it for uh, a casting deck. It's good for a sitting deck. I need some sunblock. It has a multitude of uses. It's quite functional. It puts the fun in Kushnul. Well, sir, I think that's all she wrote. Uh, we've come a long way, haven't we? We, uh, we got her all vacuumed out. We went through all of our supplies, found all of our, our screws and bolts and nuts and our wires and everything else, and then we pretend that we're, we don't know anything about them because that they stress us out, <laughs> don't they? Because we don't know how to do the wiring. But we also didn't know really how to build this deck. And I got a sweet stencil, which I'll make available on, um, on eBay. You can purchase it. If you too have a sea nymph and you want to do kind of a hobo front deck, you can purchase that stencil. I think we're good with it. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I'm going to look up a couple of things. I have this silly little idea about the edges. I don't really like how wonka lonkum they are, but you know, they are what they are. But I wonder if I got a little bit of quarter round and bent it along the edges, put a couple of brads in there. Or actually, don't they have carpet edging and stuff? Or I could use a pool noodle. I don't know. My mind's swimming with all the possibilities for the boat, but we're, we're almost a third of the way there in terms of decking. With this boat, we're really laying down the foundation for a better world. Little sparrows, little baby, little baby bunnies, and you pet them. And you say hello to the little flower, a little bumblebee and a little butterfly. They land and then they flutter away. And the bumblebee says, thank you for giving me a place to get my nectar. Hey, it's my pleasure, little bumblebee. <laughs> right? That's the kind of world we're trying to create here. Where the bear comes in and says, oh, hey, Jay. Uh, 
You mind if I have some of those strawberries? That's the kind of world. Yeah, the deer comes in and they say, thanks for the apples there, Jay. And I say, hey, no problem. The youngest wasn't gonna eat those last two, so I brought them out to the bush for you guys. Would you like a salt lick? Yeah, that'd be great, Jay. <laughs> hey, it's, it's just, a, it's a wonderful world. And, and that's what we're creating, okay? So until next time, my brothers and sisters, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Keep your canoe in the river. And uh, pet your dog a lot.